I'll just have to be on the other side of you. I'll always have to be over there. If we Look at this. One good tooth. I don't need a tooth. Look, everybody. Yours is so far away. I got a cracked tooth right there. I'm going to get it ripped out of my head. And I'm missing one right there. Totally gone. Here's Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> That's Sunday. She will, refuses to be on camera because of her tooth. So anyway, I wanted to do a quick stream about a particular forum post that I read the other day about when or whether or not to actually sabotage a phone in the event that somebody cancels a repair or doesn't want to pay. So I want to see what you guys think, because I have a strong opinion on this. I think that we should never sabotage anyone's data, and I'll tell you why. So let me show you this post. So I made a little clip of it here. Right, so this is a guy who's just posting to some colleagues, heavily disappointed today. I spent some time on a data recovery, which was successful, yay, only to have the customer say that she wants it put back together in the original state. So she's decided maybe she found that she didn't need the backup or she doesn't want to pay for it or she just can't afford it right now, something came up. So she's wanting to cancel the repair and she's asking for her phone back in the original dead state. So now what's this guy supposed to do? So he's saying, bear in mind, we'll, we'll, we won't be so, we will, we will skip over the fact that bearing in mind isn't spelled like that, right? I know that's really bothering Sunday. She's not crying enough. right now no, over that. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Bearing in mind, Katrina, does it really bother you? Where'd she go? I'm right here. Doesn't this just doesn't this just make you want to throw up a little bit right here? Oh. Bearing in mind. Yeah, you can't do that. Yeah, you can't do that, right? So would that change what you did with this phone? Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, a horrible human being. I love it. So we've no. we've hired Katrina. She's new to Great. Team iPad Rehab. Katrina is a former English professor. Also so judgy kind of person. Also, also judgy on the grammar. <laughs> Yay! All right. Uh, <laughs> um, so bearing in mind that this has her newborn kids' photos on there. Newborn actually shouldn't have space there. Just I, I, did, I did notice that. <laughs> <laughs> so in its original state, it was dead. And he's already told her exactly what was wrong with it, which it sounds like from the later replies, it had a 1V8 SDRAM short. It sounds like he replaced the PMIC. It sounds like he had to do even some trace repair. So he did a lot to this, this thing, and now she doesn't want to pay. Uh, so what I'm asking for is what do you do with a device that he now needs to return? So I want to see what chat has to say and we'll compare that to what the um, what the various forum colleagues had to say. So let's take a look. What does chat have to say? Judgy on the grammar? Yes. I oh, wanna... no, go back up to the spelling of my name. Bad. Yeah, so, yeah exactly. See? Now, Sunday's on now team. Sunday is on now team. Oh, see, wait. it's important. It's important. Oh, I see your shoulder. <laughs> All right, so what would you guys do? She would still have to pay for the time he put in. Nick says, demand payment if she or he already approved. I think that if it were on our team, this would be in your domain. So what would you do if this happened to us? I think case by case, I'd have to call a customer because I don't know, maybe her son just found out he has a severe asthma and she can't afford a nebulizer. And so that's why she needs it. You know, like there's so many things that can be wrong with this woman why so I wouldn't want to say I'm gonna destroy your data you rotten human being because you're not gonna pay me for my work <laughs> that's not okay because you don't know it all but if it's a case of I've just realized I can live customer without the wrong data. needs to pay for services provider thanks for the two bucks <laughs> Octave Wolf I hope I said that right I would really I, if I said that wrong I am deeply sorry because I do think getting people's names right is important on the Wolves. <laughs> um, by the way, the guy from the website thinks your name is Summer. Yeah. Just letting you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I think if it were, I think that you're right, that kind of being a customer case by case, that's sort of the point of a boutique business is that you actually have relationships with the people and they're not just numbers and jobs. So figuring that stuff out and trying to work something out is important. Um, but I think that you kind of have to learn the hard way when you're in business that, that this is r partially this guy's fault because of a lack of clear policies and written approved estimates. So you have to set expectations from the beginning. So for example, for us, if you don't have the pass code for your device that we have done this kind of work for, 
we're going to bill you anyway. And we try to make that really crystal clear that we're providing a path to data and that the fact that you don't, you forgot the passcode or you're wrong about it, that doesn't negate this kind of work that I might put into a data recovery. So we try to be really crystal clear about that and have you read that, sign that and send it in so that it's hard to make an argument. If you've got that signed estimate, then it's really easy to just follow the estimate, which is um, then we're going to keep your device. You can't just cancel or, or quit. That's part of our policy. So I think not having those policies clear, you've got to own that to some degree. But what are you going to do? So what, would, what do you think about um, breaking the device? Um, as far as making it never recoverable well, again? How can you return it to the original condition? What would you do? Me. Yeah. <laughs> no. I would run over it in the car a couple of times. I would leave it in the rain. I'd what put it in the microwave if I wanted it to be not recoverable. Oh my <laughs> gosh! That would. But I wouldn't do that because that's silly. But he's. My question is, he already has the data. He has the data. So he has not the data. I think we should clarify that. What he has is an iTunes, iTunes backup, backup. Period. Okay. So, and I think that's the big point. So if we look over here to see um, what is the community, Microsoft and community saying, there's a lot of comments that say things like, um, she won't pay at any price for all the data, and he says no. Um, so here's a guy saying, back up the phone and break it. If she comes back and says, okay, I want it recovered, then you'll have the file, meaning the iTunes backup. And then another guy saying, uh, you provided a service that she has to pay. Another guy says, stand your ground, do what you think is best. It's, tell him it's not safe to put back together a dead phone. Another guy says, I wouldn't give it back. Uh, another guy says, for now, try to somehow undo the repair by removing ICs or anything that you might have added to the phone. So that's kind of a good point that you want to harvest back your chips. You know, that's kind of, that there's some cost there. Um, then we've got, there's got a guy who's saying, uh, swap the NAND. So that's what made me want to do this stream. Swap the NAND. That's not OK. And another guy saying, I would pull the EEPROM, pull her NAND, uh, break her NAND, like actually making it completely unrecoverable for data. So that, I think, is over the line. And here's why. This is why I wanted to do this stream. I think having just been to the digital forensics conference, what we think of when we think about data recovery is really small. When we think of iTunes backup, that's a fraction of the actual data that's on the device. I was blown away looking at what some of these $25,000 software packages can actually pull out of a phone. So there are things on the phone that could potentially exonerate what is that phone? We gotta turn it off. Oh, it's Christy. There are things that are on any phone that could potentially exonerate someone from a criminal investigation. So maybe even a year from now, that phone could be used to be part of a criminal investigation where it can tell you things like, I know that you saw a notification because your backlight came on at this certain time. I know that your phone was not plugged into the charger at this point in time because I can see when it was plugged and unplugged. All of this stuff that's not part of the iTunes backup. All of the app data and things that you could go after if you were really trying to carve out forensic data. You can't destroy that. That is not returning the device to the original condition. That's permanently and irretrievably, irrevocably breaking that path to data. And that is completely uncool. So I think that it's really, and, that, and not only that, I think you could be held liable, criminally liable, if you destroyed something that um, would have been evidence in a criminal investigation. So you could, you know, let's say that something happens down the road where she's accused of a crime, and she needs that information on that phone to exonerate herself, and then it, and then she d is not able to produce it because of something that you did. After that phone is sent to the to the uh, investigators, they'll figure out oh, this guy changed an hand or pulled it or something like that. They're going to come back at you civilly to say you, in you know you destroyed some property here, and that was a big deal. So you have to kind of think think a little bit broader than just iTunes backup. So I I wanted to kind of call your attention to that, 
And what would I do if I really was in that situation and it was partially my fault that I didn't have good policies, so I felt that I couldn't really withhold her device in because I had a not very strong agreement and she wanted me to return it to the original condition. What I would do is I would have a conversation with her and I would say, hey, I can't return it to the original condition. I also can't give it back to you working um, because that's unfair. So what I'm going to do with your knowledge is I'm going to remove the, something really obvious like the battery connector and that way it's not free or easy for you to get data. She could go down the street and get a cheap guy to put that connector back on there and if she's willing to do all that that's fine because it's my fault. It's my fault for not having those policies. So let's hear what you guys think. Sunday, do you have any other thoughts as we as we? No, chat I agree. Here? It's, e it's either you didn't have a clear policy. It's going to be cut and dry if she brought it in and said yes to data. Then we keep the device until you pay. And most state laws give you the ability to do that. And if you didn't have it, then you do have. And we've eaten money before because we forgot to tell somebody something, and your customer has you know the right to. Take a device if we didn't get them to accept a cost on something, but you would make it so they couldn't easily get their data, and, but so not destroy their ability to get their data. Yeah, I don't think that you can sabotage a phone. That is, uh, that's over the line. So we've got chat saying, I'll tell her she won't get the device back or she has to pay, for, pay a fee for the data. Services have been rendered, she has to pay. Nick says, you don't do body repair on a car and when it's done, <laughs> that sounds really fun. If you were doing body repair on a car, and then they said, you know what, I can't afford that. So that's happened. This situation happened to me with my car down at Townline, where I took it in. Please tell me that Brian at Townline sledgehammered your car I'm back. I'm never allowed to go there again. Oh, well, please. <laughs> I took my car in for an inspection and said there's something rattling in the back. Just letting you know if you, while you're doing the inspection. So he took. Was the, this the time that you had the dead rat in the bag of no. feed from Tractor Supply? No. That was a different, a different time. time. Okay. When, so when I dropped it off, he did the inspection, and while he was at it, he removed the tires to look for something. He went down the rabbit hole. Okay. He was like, I'm just going to take the tires all off, and he did all this work to find what he thought was real, and then told me it'd be, you know, $1,000. $1 million. And I said, no, I just was letting you know there was a rail. I don't care. It's not bothering me. And he said I had to pay it. And I said, I, I dropped it off for a $29 inspection. I'm not paying for something I didn't ask for. But he had already done the work, and he was pissed. Yeah. He said, I'm not going to charge you, but don't ever come back to my garage again. So maybe yes. that's the advice. I'm not going to charge you. Here's your phone. I've made it so you can't access your data. But right. Because it's partially it's the responsibility of the shop to right. set the, it's the, it's the shop's job to set the expectations. That's really sure. Is that why you don't guarantee the device will work when you do data recovery successfully or not? No, I don't guarantee a device is going to work if it comes in needing data recovery. Because, for example, if I have a water damaged phone, maybe I can get it to work one time. We had one, we had one t this, today that only booted up one time. So we were able to extract all the data. That phone is so salt water corroded, it's, it, it, we can't get it to boot again. So I recovered it here on this computer and then our process is to send it up to the extraction team. The extraction team couldn't get it to boot again. So at least I had this back up here. So we separate data recovery from uh, from that. Isn't it weird that if Apple shuts its business, you will lose your job too? That is not true. Uh, the world of business is weird. That's not true. My, my job is to repair tiny things. I've got a microscope, I've got all of these tools, and it's true that much of what we repair are Apple-made products because they tend to break a lot and a lot of people have them. But that certainly isn't all of our business. So just sitting around here right now, I can see a, um, a, uh, some kind of a device that's used for an industrial application. We fixed two Nintendo Switches last night. We have oh, uh, a, an electric stove console. Oh yeah, right up there we have somebody's broken stove. We fixed hot tub motherboards, the bowling alley thing, ski ball machine. Yeah, the D Christy just fixed, what was that called? A giant DJ, controller. a DJ controller. So there's lots and lots of things that are uh, small electronics that need micro soldering. So we're professional micro solderers and we've done contract work for uh, Disney Imagineering that we can't talk about. So there's all sorts of things that are beyond Apple devices. And that's really important for you guys to know when you come out for micro soldering training, 
that it's not just fixing iPhones, and it's certainly not just fixing iPads. Uh, when we went to the to the conference, iPad rehab. Oh yeah, that. Oh, <laughs> All right, why destroy the phone? Pull the PMIC you put on and move on. Mm, yeah, if you put a chip on, take it back off. That sounds that sounds reasonable. I will right. offer my advice for yes, how to get somebody to pay. Okay, how to get pay. someone to pay. Please so come over, we was... need to see your eyes. Come on, <laughs> just do it. <gasps> Yay! So my advice generally, if Jessa gives me a phone, says deadbeat invoice for data. Oh yeah, like you just got the, the, I will uh, say, the, the knee breaker job. Yes. yes, if you're not going to pay this, we need you to understand that we are the owners of this device and all data containing oh, yeah. in the device, which means all your dick pics, are ours <laughs> that you we have all your personal information and that not that usually, we would ever look we would never look but that usually will kind of put a fire under someone's ass to say you know what we better pay and get our stuff back because it is if new york state law gives us the right to right. we have ownership of that device if they don't pay the bill yeah there's an artisan lien mm -hmm. if you hire somebody oh, with an agreement <laughs> see this why i'm in a camera <laughs> Great job, Sunday. Yeah, great, thanks. Great, now I gotta uh -huh. go edit out the middle of the oh, video. Oh, Yes. Now, that is a good thing where we will have people that will send us a device, and then since our queue is long in the summer, a lot of times we're, we're working on the rush jobs, people that are doing rush, and it can take a while, weeks, for you to get your device to come up for queue. A lot of times people have um, found that they had a backup somewhere else or they just kind of don't care as much you know if you if you lose all the pictures from the 4th of July and the fireworks and the camping trip everything was amazing on the 5th of July you're really upset but by August yeah, you've gone camping again and you know well you're thinking more about back to school and you don't really care about your 4th of July pictures that happens to us sometimes and um, you know if it if it was significant we could always start just charging up front but we don't like to do that um, so for now, it is really made Sunday's job easier to just kind of let people know that we do have a lien on that, uh, on that, you know, on your phone. And if you don't want to pay your legitimate bill, then uh, you know we won't be able to blank that phone and erase it. You know that that's part of uh, part of the deal. There we go. Hi, mom. Says Igor. All right. So that's all. I just wanted to <laughs> let you guys know. <laughs> What? Sunday is talking about dick pics while flashing, and then they remove <laughs> It's being reviewed. View deleted pictures. Sunday is talking about dick pics while flashing. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Alrighty, so that's all. Just a quick little PSA. Think hard when you're considering, when you're mad. You know, you're mad. You're invested. This stuff is emotional. This is stuff that you pour your heart and soul. All of us in this industry, we're working 80 hours a week, and we're really, really burning the midnight oil on some of these recoveries. I know that's definitely true here. I know that's true for all of you guys out there that are that are really putting your heart and soul into this stuff. And you get mad when somebody wants to stiff you on the bill. That's very natural. But when you're mad, don't sabotage their data. Think in the big picture. Pick photos, iTunes backup, that's a small fraction of the total data that's on the device. If you crack their NAND, if you throw away their EEPROM, that's really over the line and you could even be liable so think about that before you do that don't sabotage anybody's data and that's all for this little message Bye bye. <laughs> bye, -bye. <laughs> I like thank you Sunday